I am super excited because today your girl is trying something new. I always talk about pursuing your joy, pursuing your purpose, and making sure that you are dedicating some time to yourself and your joy one feel good thing at a time. And for me personally, that's just been looking like a little more rest, a little more time to have quiet with my thoughts, a little more time to really rediscover, reconnect, and recommit to my joy. As per usual, this is something that I share with you guys all the time. And today I am going to do that very same thing through the experience of float therapy. Now, I've never done this before, but I've heard that it's absolutely amazing. I'm going to be doing it in a sensory deprivation tank. And apparently the ones that they have here are like the Mercedes Benzes of float tanks. So come with me as we journey to floating. One feel good thing at a time. <laughs> When was the last time you tried something new? And no, this is not a rhetorical question, nor is it a drill. Hey, 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 guys. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Journey to Purpose with me, Erica Lasan. And in this week's episode, I will be detailing part of my experience from my first time ever trying float therapy. Throughout this episode, I'll be sharing some of the revelations that came up, but more importantly, why you should journey into trying something new, while also sharing some tangible solutions to help you sit back, relax, and enjoy the float as well. But before before I go down that road, I'm going to back it up a little bit and explain why I even considered taking float therapy to begin with. So part of the reason why I'm doing this today is because I've just come off of a crazy launch cycle of the Journey to Purpose Dream Academy. And for the past two weeks, I've been doing a lot of emails, sitting for long periods of time, while also chasing my kids around, listening to a lot of noise. <laughs> and right now, all I really want is quiet. I'm also really looking forward to the experience of not really having to stand <laughs> or sit. So I'm really hoping that maybe there will be some back relief because um, my back has been feeling a little tight. I didn't do my yoga and I haven't been doing it for a while. So um, overall, I'm just really looking forward to getting a good night's rest after this and um, seeing what kind of thoughts come up while I'm in the tank. The first time I ever heard about floating and float therapy or sensory deprivation was when I was watching the first season of Stranger Things on Netflix. There is a character on there. Her name is Eleven. She's an alien or she was grown in a lab or something. It's kind of very intricate as to what her backstory is. But basically, she has these superpowers where she can see, feel, and communicate with people in other dimensions and in other uh, places and times. But in order for her to tap into this power of being able to access communication with other people, she has to be in a complete sense of calm. So in order to help her facilitate this, when her group of friends really needed her to tap into this power in order to save their other friend, Will, who was stuck in the upside down, I hope I'm not giving too much of this show away for those of you who are still considering watching it, they put her in a sensory deprivation tank. Um, but they made a makeshift one. So they put her in a an inflatable pool full of salt water, Epsom salt. In this sensory deprivation pool, Eleven was really able to just relax and turn her mind off so that she could turn her powers on and focus on communicating and channeling her powers so that she could see clearly without having to feel anything in the present. The first time I watched the episode where they explained um, what sensory deprivation was, I remember being very intrigued and wanting to experience it for myself to the point where I actually did Google sensory deprivation, sensory deprivation tank, sensory deprivation near me. <laughs> but even with all of that research, I don't know that I actually would have gone to do it on my own, at least not anytime soon. Fast forward a couple of months after my introduction to sensory deprivation, thank you Netflix, I learned that my younger sister actually tried it and she loved it. She could not stop raving about it. And after that, I found myself really intrigued again and wanting to do it. They say the third time's a charm, right? <laughs> 
Well, a couple of months ago, I was at a business connections meeting where I happened to meet a couple of people who own a float therapy center. I had a meeting with the owner of the wellness center and I remember saying, oh, I'm just going to lay there and I'm not going to think about anything. I just want to turn my thoughts off. And I was very surprised to hear him say, oh, you're going to be thinking about things. They're just not going to be the things that you think you're going to be thinking about. And I remember thinking like, what do you mean by that? Okay, when I first got into the tank, my mind really did start to drift to really random things. Within the first two minutes, I found myself thinking, Ugh, why am I thinking about this? Like, I don't have time to think about this. After that thought played through my mind about two or three times, Ugh, I don't have time to think about this, it kind of hit me girl, you have absolutely nothing but time to think about these things. <laughs> You're literally sitting here in this tank of darkness, floating with nothing but time to think. And the moment that happened, I really then began to allow myself to relax and ease into the experience so that I could just be. And with that, I just kind of had to let go <laughs> and release this idea of not having time so that I could really just be with my thoughts, all of them, no matter how seemingly random or mundane or unimportant the thought seemed in the moment, I realized that it was popping up for some reason, so I should acknowledge it. I'm just going to share some of the thoughts that came to me as I floated around the tank <laughs> in darkness for 90 minutes. I'm putting a little disclaimer out there. I apologize in advance if my thoughts are all over the place, but I promise to do my best to explain these thoughts in a way that is useful and beneficial to you as you journey to joy in trying something new. Okay, all right, here we go. So the first thought that I had in getting prepared for the float um, was that it felt something like a ritualistic shedding. You're probably thinking, girl, what are you talking about? Before you even get into the tank, you have to take off all of your clothes and you have to take a shower. Um, but in addition to this, you have to take off all of your jewelry. So being a jewelry designer, um, I wear a lot of jewelry. Some of it you see on me, like my earrings, I have on an occasional necklace, a bracelet or two, maybe one or two rings. But in addition to this, I wear a lot of body jewelry that isn't often seen. So um, typically on any given day, I'm wearing about 12 to 13 waist beads. I'm wearing anklets in addition to the jewelry that can be seen. So as I prepared to get into the tank, there was a good 10 minutes or so where I was just removing all of my jewelry. And for me, it almost felt like, I don't want to say a shedding of my skin, but it kind of felt like a preparation for naked truth, if that makes any sense. I know that this all sounds super vague and really weird, but that's kind of how it felt as I took off each waist bead. And I forgot to mention, there are no real lights, but each room is has a different colored lighting theme. So while there aren't like bright fluorescent lights, there's like a mood that's set. And so the room that I went into was green because there wasn't a yellow room. After about three to five minutes of being in the tank, the outside light cut out and it was like pitch, pitch, pitch black dark. I couldn't see anything in the tank. Um, and it was so dark that I couldn't tell whether or not my eyes were open or closed. So at that point, I didn't know what to expect and I just felt like, okay, it's happening now. It's happening now. And this is where the thoughts actually started to kick in. <laughs> and one of the first thoughts that I had, and this is probably indicative of the way I do life, <laughs> but one of my first thoughts was, am I floating right? Which is wild, like who thinks about that? am I floating right? Like there's a right or a wrong way to float, especially in a situation like this where the salt water is doing all of the work. So it's not like trying to float if you're in a pool where you have to activate your core, try to keep your back straight, and you're working to stay afloat. With this, you have to do absolutely nothing. You just float. And for about the first 15 minutes, I just found myself 
finding it very difficult to relax. <laughs> I was holding a lot of tension in my legs. I found that I was like clenching my butt cheeks a lot. I found that um, I was also holding a lot of tension in my neck. And every time I found that I was holding tension somewhere because I, my mind also kept coming back to this, relax, relax, relax. Every time I found myself thinking this, I had to make a conscious effort to breathe. <laughs> So I would take deep breaths and then let them go. And with that, I would find myself kind of like melt into the water. And then a couple minutes later, I found myself clenching up again. And then I would have to repeat the process. After about 15 minutes of going through this process of just breathing and relaxing, breathing and relaxing and trying to bring myself present, I, the thought that came to mind as an extension of that was how I show up in the world, trying to make sure that I'm doing everything right. Like if I've been taught something, how I then start find myself trying to work really hard in order to deliver certain results, but how quick and how easy it is to lose sight of your joy when you start to do that versus just breathing and being exactly who you are and how you are. Another thought that kind of piggybacked off of that one was how easy it is for us to breathe and how breathing brings instant relaxation, but how easy it can also be to just be so tense that you don't allow yourself to breathe in every area of life and in so many um, matters of life. When really, the moment you're able to exhale is the moment you're really then able to move forward in a way that allows you to find your joy. And every time I found myself taking a deep breath, it almost felt super sweet, not only because my body could finally relax, but because it was almost like bringing myself back to a state of presence and being in the present. It also helped that the tank smells really good. It was like a scent of... Um, it smelled like lavender and clean linens. So every time I took a deep breath, the breath was welcome. Once I finally got my mind and my body to cooperate in just being present as I was floating, um, and this was probably around maybe after 15 or 20 minutes of being in the tank, the next thing that my mind kind of jumped to was just how firmly supported I felt, which is weird because when you think of floating in water, you think of just bobbing up and down and being all swishy-washy and just going all over the place. But in a lot of ways, I was surprised by how firmly supported I felt, especially around my spine. It almost felt like I was being wrapped in a pillow or like a super firm mattress, but one that kind of molded and melted into my body, which was very interesting. And with that, I started thinking about work and rest and relaxing and God's provision and how God is always supporting us and how we are provided for. And as my thoughts started to just drift and drift and drift a little bit further, <laughs> at some point I found that my thoughts started to get trained on subtle sensations. Now, I don't know if this is where the science of things was starting to kick in, where maybe the Epsom salt was starting to release some tension that I'd had in my neck or something. I have absolutely no idea. But my left shoulder started spasming very slightly. Um, and as that was happening, I felt subtle sensations and subtle ripples in the water. Um, and then that caused parts of my skin to get like very prickly in certain places, but it was like I could feel each and every single uh, hair follicle. It was very, very interesting. And so that kind of brought me back to the present of thinking about my skin and how our skin is such a vital organ and the fact that the skin is an organ. And as I thought about the skin, it made me think about the fact that I'd forgotten that I was even in water <laughs> because the water in the tank is room temperature. And because you're floating, it's like you really forget for some moments that you're even in the water. 
those were some of the random things that would come up to mind as I just thought about being in my body in the tank. But then in my moments of total rest and relaxation in the tank, I found that my mind went to work. And as I was thinking about work, I began to think about what I really want. And as someone who is a visionary and a big part of the work that I do as a joy strategist and a creative consultant is I consider vision and what it is that my clients desire for themselves and then I help them develop the creative solutions and the systems to get there. But understand that in the same way that I think about this for my clients and what will bring them joy, purpose, and healing and what's next, I do this work for myself as well. So as I was in the tank, that's something that I found, um, that's something that came back to mind for me over and over again. What is it that I really want? How was this launch experience of the Dream Academy? Is this something that I'd wanna do again? What are the thoughts for 2021? All of these thoughts were running through my mind. And I found that while I was in the tank, I kind of had a moment of real honesty <laughs> with myself um, about how I've been doing things and things that were working for me, but also some things that weren't working for me. And in a couple of ways, I don't know why this is making me so uncomfortable to, to think about this or say this out loud, but at this point in my journey, I am fully aware of what my purpose is. And one thing that's come up for me a lot over the past year, year and a half that I kind of keep like mushing to the side is this desire to be a professional speaker, like doing it full time all the time. Yes, I do things that are scary for me. Yes, I do push myself. But when I think of what it is that I truly desire and the journey to purpose overall, I do believe that I've been um, playing within the realm of my comfort zone because I want everyone to have access to this work. But sometimes when you're really looking to push your vision forward, you have to do things that are outside of the comfort zone. And that means that sometimes everyone won't get to go on the journey to start off. And so those are some thoughts that I've had to sit with in the days since this float therapy experience, and I'll definitely be detailing this in future episodes, but I just found it really interesting that it took me being in a dark pool, just floating around for 90 minutes for me to really have that genuine conversation with myself about what it is that I truly desire moving forward. Even though it's outlined on my, my vision board and it's outlined within my vision, just understanding how um, I should begin to access that and what it could potentially look like. I left my float session feeling light, inspired, creative, and clear. Like seriously, as soon as I got out of the tank, the first thing that I wanted to do was grab a notepad so I could just jot down some of these thoughts to share with you guys, but also so that I could keep in mind some of the things that I would like to prioritize and sit with a little longer going into this last um, few months of the year. With that said, I'm also going to share some things that I will be doing differently for my next float. And these might be some things that you may want to consider if you are thinking about doing a float session for yourself. The first thing that I'm gonna do differently next time is use earplugs. This wellness center did provide earplugs to be used while in the tank, but because I was wearing a swim cap, I didn't think it necessary to put them on. And I kind of wish I would have because it would have blocked out a lot more noise and it was very quiet in um, the center where I was, but there was an occasional noise or two that kind of like would get my attention and it would have really just been nice to not hear absolutely anything. The next thing that I would do differently next time is I would ditch the swim cap. Before I got into the tank, the owner of the center, um, asked me if I was going to be wearing one. And I was like, yeah, because I don't know about the salt water in my locks. And then he explained uh, the difference between, you know, Epsom salt and it being, not being sodium chloride. I think that's what actual salt is. I can't remember. I don't know the scientific compounds, but basically he explained to me 
that it really wouldn't do anything to my hair. And I didn't want to have any like white stuff in it afterwards. So I wore the swim cap. I should have just been without it because there were um, moments when having it on was a little uh, disruptive. When I would float too close to the edge of the tank, my hair would bounce on it and then that would create noise. And then I'd be thinking about the noise in my hair. And it was just a distraction that I don't think was very necessary. Whereas if I didn't have the swim cap on, every time I would have gotten close to the edge of the tank, it wouldn't have made any type of noise. Um, and my hair still got a little wet anyway, so it was kind of pointless. I ended up washing my hair after the session. Um, the third thing I would do differently is to make sure that I eat beforehand. Not eating anything heavy, but for the first probably 30 minutes of the session, my, my stomach was growling <laughs> because I hadn't eaten all day. But if you are listening to this podcast episode and wondering what would bring you joy or what you could try as you journey to purpose, keep listening through this brief break as I share something that can help you journey to purpose one feel good thing at a time. If you have an awareness of your need to find your joy or rediscover yourself or understand yourself better in this season of your life, I would love to invite you to visit my site, Erica lasan.com and take the joy quest as you go through the joy quest you'll be able to engage with a vision of what you really desire for your life to be like feel like look like taste like and all the things but more importantly by the end of this self-paced program and it only takes 45 minutes to an hour you'll have clarity in your vision you'll have an understanding and a roadmap of what it takes to get you there as well as a process to make sure that you stay there but lastly, you'll have the ability to give yourself permission to actually pursue a life of joy unapologetically. And with this, you'll gain the confidence to live a life of freedom that will actually put you on path for your purpose so that you can start living the life of your dream starting today. Not only do you deserve it, but the world needs you. They need your gifts, they need your talents, they need everything that you have to offer, but more importantly, they need you happy, whole, and healed. And the Joy Quest can help you get there. It's time for me to share this week's solutions in joy jams. <laughs> And this week's solutions are really to help you find your joy and really highlighting what I hope you've gained from listening to this episode. And the first solution I'd like to share with you guys is to try something new. I started off this episode asking you, when was the last time you tried something new? Embrace new experiences. That thing that you've always considered wanting to do, but you have yet to do, and you've been doing the research forever and ever, Put a date on your calendar to just do the thing. <laughs> As a matter of fact, let's make this a challenge. Do the thing before 2021 is over. I would love it if you would send me a DM on Instagram at Erica Lassan or in the show notes or in leaving a review, whatever it is, wherever it is, however it is that you wish to contact me and let me know what your something new is that you will be doing and then the date that you plan on doing it. I can't wait to see what you come up with. <laughs> The second solution that I want to share with you is to be receptive and to ditch the expectations so that you can fully engage with the thoughts and the things that come to mind because your expectations will leave you working like mentally you'll be working or you'll be trying to make the experience what you want it to be when really it's a new experience. It could go any which way. So treat it like an adventure. The third solution I would like to share with you as it relates to finding joy in new experiences is to take note. And with this, I mean like actually take notes. Um, I shared with you that the first thing I wanted to do when I got out of the tank was to grab a notepad and jot all the things down. And the reason why it's so important to take note is because it allows you to put some things down so you're not carrying the things that overwhelm you all the time. I find that as I work with my clients and as I speak with other entrepreneurs or students, they're carrying a literal load mentally. When if you were to just write some of the things down, you're then able to save them for a time and a place where you can appropriately dedicate 
time to them um, and handling them in the ways that you'd really like to. Instead of thinking that while you have the things in your mind, you have to handle them right then on the spot. Sometimes it really just takes you getting things out of your mind and on paper to feel a little more freedom and mental space to be able to do more things. Okay. I think that wraps it up for the solutions. As far as joy gems, I have two joy gems to share with you guys today. Um, and they actually came up in my devotions this morning. So I'm really excited to share the first one coming from Lamentations 322. And it says, yet this I call to mind and therefore I have hope because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. This verse in particular really resonated with me today because Part of the reason why I personally felt so strongly about having the float therapy session to begin with was because I'd felt a bit consumed over the course of the past week and a half with the course launch. And there were some feelings that had come up for me. There were some emotions that had come up for me that I wasn't necessarily expecting. And at one point, I really found myself needing to tap into some of my own joy tools because of the feelings that um, flared up. <laughs> but because of God's love and because I know, I know, I know that at all times, there is always joy to be had in the journey. I was able to not be consumed by those same feelings. Um, and it's simply because of hope. <laughs> you know, love brings on hope and our, our joy helps us tap into that hope as well. The second joy gem I want to share with you comes from Hebrews 1.9. And it says, Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. I'm sure that there's a lot to study about this one line in this one sentence. And I don't know the complete like scriptural rever relevance of every single word that's included here. But something that did stand out to me about this verse is the fact that when you're experiencing joy, joy is an anointing. <laughs> and in this passage, it speaks of joy almost like it's a blessing and it's a blessing that's given to you by God himself. Like, and, and, and with this, it's not just a blessing that anybody gets though. We all have access to joy, right? We all have access to God's love. Not to think of this in terms of like hierarchy or wanting to be better than anybody. I just find it really amazing that the idea of having joy can also be counted as an anointing, which is really, really, really cool. Um, there's a lot more to say about that, but I don't know that I necessarily have the words or the thoughts to express them all right now. With that said, guys, we have come to the end of this week's episode, and I just want to thank you for taking the time to listen to my thoughts. I know that there were many thoughts. And if you happen to be in Northern New Jersey, Bedminster to be exact, Go visit my friends at Quantum Wellness and tell them Erica sent you and that you are a listener to the Journey to Purpose podcast. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about me and my journey or how the Journey to Purpose can help you, feel free to visit the site ericalassan.com. I also hope that if you are listening to this, that you are subscribed to the mailing list because as we're heading into the holiday season, we are going to be talking about business, baby, how you can support small business this holiday season. We're going to be talking about relationships and how to better them as you journey into the holidays and so much more. Thank you for listening. And I look forward to chatting with you again next week as we journey together one feel good thing at a time. Bye. <laughs>